Well, very cool. I know everyone is, oh, this is great. You know, it's it's so hard to tell where our mind, our collective mindset is at on a Wednesday afternoon. We're, we're you know, halfway through the conference now. Um, I know the 90 minute learning track that I sat in for um, for Trevor's session was awesome. Um, my brain is still playing catch up from Carla's Q and A. So it's just so great for people to um, continue to keep showing up and be uh, present and engaged. Uh, this session is gonna be so awesome. Um, uh, just for a little bit of background, I had first heard of uh, Vaughn's work at Assumption College here through a podcast that Chris actually did um, with them uh, two years ago now, I think. We can post that in the Discord so y'all can follow up from this session there. But uh, I'm, I'm happy to introduce Vaughn Cleary, who's the deputy school principal of Assumption College, which is kind of interestingly named from the American perspective because it's a 7 through 12 school in Australia. Uh, so Vaughn helped design and lead the MyMap system, which is a cool scheduling process that converted the typical four subject and elective day into a really cool liberal arts style system with multi-aged classes um, and kids can kind of build their own result there. And you can see the examples um, on the Discord here, and I'm sure we'll carry that conversation over. But yeah, uh, you, <laughs> Chris wrote in there that's like 4.30 a.m. in Melbourne. Vaughn, is that right? Yep. It's uh, nice and early, so I'm trying to be qu quiet, uh, not to wake everyone up at the same time. Hopefully you can hear me. Oh, Lord, yes. So I we so appreciate you. Um, I'm, I can't wait to to hear what, you, what you've got for us here. So take it away. Thanks, Nick, and um, great to be here with you all. And apologies for the, um, for the accent. Um, I was just saying to Chris and Nick, I've got uh, one of my boys over your way at the moment um, doing Camp America up in a, a place north of Maine and having an absolute ball. So thanks for looking after him. Um, so, yeah, as Nick said, um, I work at Assumption College, which is a um, secondary Catholic school. Um, now, to put it in a little bit of context, um, the Australian education system is a little bit different than what you'd have over uh, in America. Um, about a third of the schools uh, are public, uh, totally government um, run. About a third of the schools would call independent um, uh, private schools. And about a third of the schools are what we call um, low fee uh, faith based schools. Um, and Assumption College would be in that latter category. So uh, we're a beautiful school. We're over 130 years young. Um, we're 60 odd kilometres north of Melbourne in the state of Victoria, which is in the southern part um, of Australia. And similar to America, the education system um, via the Constitution is run by the states. So we uh, use a curriculum called the Victorian Curriculum, uh, which is unique to us uh, in the state of Victoria. What I'd like to do is tell uh, a story, um, and hopefully I won't take too long because I'd love to engage in some dialogue uh, with you. Um, about our shift to what we call um, a vertical stage nine age curriculum, um, which is quite unique uh, to Victoria and definitely unique uh, to Australia. I arrived at Assumption um, in 2016 and the, um, the atmosphere that I um, was welcomed into uh, was not particularly uh, positive. Um, in Victoria uh, or Victorian Catholic schools, uh, we underwent uh, a range of different surveys uh, annually. Um, and the data that I uh, was confronted with back in 2016 um, in my role as Deputy Principal Learning and Teaching um, indicated that um, the staff and students uh, basically indicated our learning and engagement um, was incredibly low. Um, now, this data was um, presented in front of you here was our rating um, as a percentile uh, compared to other Victorian uh, Catholic uh, secondary schools. Um, and as you can see, um, about a bottom 10% uh, of um, the state in regards to those metrics. Um, as a new staff member, um, I was told by the staff that um, our students weren't motivated, so don't even bother trying to change anything. Um, so what I was basically part of was a school that had given up. Um, the teachers had uh, decanted responsibility for promoting uh, and engaging and motivating learning experience uh, to the students. 
Um, and there was a significant battle uh, that I was confronted with um, as a result. So here's some other data there. I won't um, uh, talk about everything, but but basically the morale of staff and students was incredibly low. Um, the, uh, a lot of the staff had been there uh, a long time. Um, the students were telling us that they were not in engaged with their learning, were not motivated. Um, and that was basically mirrored with what the staff were saying. So at the time, there was a, a, a wonderful principal, um, Miss Kate Fogarty, who finished up last year. Um, her and I decided to, um, I suppose, reimagine the learning experience for the students. And we were wondering how we were going to do that. Um, we sat down and we talked about having a 2020 learning vision, uh, which was um, uh, three or four years away at that point in time. Um, and we started doing some research around what would constitute um, uh, an engaging and a motivating learning environment. Um, and we're really inspired by the work of a range of um, um, academics um, um, slash um, journalists um, at the time. So on the screen there, you just see um, uh, some examples of those scholars. Um, three out of the four of them um, are American. Um, first of all was Sir Ken Robinson, who is a British um, scholar whose work uh, promoted uh, the use of creativity and really cemented the idea in myself that um, schools were largely like uh, factories uh, where they treated students uh, a lot they were on a conveyor belt um, and really pushed for a reimagination of learning around, um, you know, stage on age. Um, Alfie Cohn, who I'm sure is well known to your community, um, I'd call him is an, is an American provocateur uh, who really challenged the traditional um, model of schooling. Um, Simon Sinek um, uh, explained the why. Uh, we really use his work in the change management strategy. And the other, the, the other one there listed is Dan Pink, who wrote a book called Drive. And I was really uh, inspired by Dan Pink's book, Drive. He's first three chapters were based uh, on mastery, autonomy and purpose. Um, and his work was basically um, around what motivates our people um, in schools. And it was, a, um, I suppose, a, a popular piece of work uh, based on self-determination theory uh, by Dietschy and Ryan, uh, two more American scholars whose work has inspired uh, many motivational uh, literature around the world. Um, now, uh, the other one that we were really um, engaged with was a theory um, called Stage Environment Fit Theory uh, by Jacqueline Eccles and colleagues uh, that basically said that schools were not uh, fit for purpose um, at a time where young people needed um, agency, identity, strong relationships. Uh, secondary schools uh, were basically set up uh, that were completely incongruent with them. So... Based on that knowledge, we were aiming to create a learning experience for our young people um, that was truly motivating. Um, and I mentioned the narrative at the school being around our kids not motivated. So we decided to try to design a curriculum, you know, based on uh, self-determination theory. Uh, and we ended up calling it My Map. So My Map is a year seven to 10 curriculum, which was just a dream back in 2017 uh, and was first unveiled um, at Assumption in 2020. As I said, it was, it's quite unique. Uh, not many schools in Victoria uh, are doing anything uh, like we're doing. Uh, but what we went to do is try to create um, uh, a curriculum that promoted mastery through deep learning, uh, autonomy via voice and choice, and peace sense for purposeful learning. So, and my obviously is anchored to the personalized nature um, of the program. So using self-determination theory and stage environment fit theory, uh, we tried to uh, create a timetable that enables students to uh, achieve these things. So what we did, um, we decided to um, shift away from the traditional year seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, we have 13 years of compulsory you know, schooling here in Australia. And I know in America, um, you know, your structure is a little bit different. Um, but I'd like to perhaps um, have you reimagine what a middle school experience would be um, like if it was uh, adapted. Um, so what you see on the screen here is um, a movement away from year 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 um, to learning uh, a range of colours. 
So uh, what we had done, we created some uh, colours that were mapped to the Victoria curriculum. Um, from left to right there, uh, you'll see a, a Q symbol. Um, that is our symbol for our Quare subjects, which are our Year 7 Semester 1 uh, experiences. So what happens at Assumption, all the students um, uh, join us from primary school. Um, they experience a semester-based Quare program, and Quare is part of our school model, model meaning to seek. So our seekers do about 15 subjects as part of their first semester, um, everything from textiles to metal to Punjabi, French, science, PE, uh, mathematics, English, humanities, etc. So uh, what the design is with Quare is that students can experience all the subjects that are offered in the Victoria curriculum. And then uh, in the middle of year seven, they get to decide um, what their personalised learning experience is going to be from then on. So when they get to middle of year seven, um, they're expected to do an English of their choice, a mathematics of their choice, and an RE of their choice. Um, other than that, throughout, throughout the rest of year seven, eight, nine, and 10, um, all of the subjects that the students pick, um, uh, they actually have autonomy uh, to select themselves. And I'd like to explain the colours that you'll see there. So sandstone is our level seven of the Victorian curriculum sub-X. White is level eight. And then as we go up to yellow, light blue, dark blue, our mantra is as the colour intensifies, so does the learning. So instead of a student sitting in a year seven semester two science, uh, humanities, PE, art, whatever it would be, students start their journey and select uh, subjects at their stage, not their age. So the reality is by the time students are going into year eight and nine, for example, um, all of their classes are multi-age. Um, and for every student that might be gifted in science, who might be doing a, a, a light blue science, there might be another one doing um, a light blue dance or a light blue uh, jewellery making, for example. We also have what we call multicoloured learning experiences where kids uh, basically can uh, come, come into the same class um, uh, regardless of their stage uh, of learning. And a good example of creative, is creative writing, where you can have kids from a beginning level right through to advance, uh, and the teacher differentiate, differentiates the content. Um, the um, MOOC symbol, the little U, uh, indicates that it's a course that has micro credentials in it. And a good example is that we run Duke of Edinburgh, um, you know, as a subject where they get uh, a leadership uh, credential that helps their entry in the, into university. We also have integrated subjects um, as seen there by the STEM. Um, so it's a STEM yellow level. Uh, you'll see by the little um, uh, beaker in the middle that it's basically a science subject, uh, but it's integrated uh, with uh, technology. Uh, you see the little ear uh, there. Um, and... As part of our journey, uh, what we try to do is create some avatars. Um, and I'd like you to meet Anna, Peter, Sarah, Rosa, Will, and Sam. And all of our avatars have a different journey. Um, and what we have tried to do with our learning community is to say that, um, you know, for Peter, he wanted a traditional uh, uh, school experience. And this is what uh, an education may look like for Peter. Um, and what this has done is enable us to visualise um, and uh, show our community that each learning uh, journey is different um, and students now have create their own avatars, um, you know, when they actually uh, are selecting their uh, subject selections. So this is some of the visuals that we've uh, tried to uh, create with our uh, students and, and staff. And to help visualise our community understand exactly um, where they're heading, uh, we've used the metaphor of journey, uh, which fits in very nicely with my map. Um, the senior subjects uh, at the top there are what we call a VCE, which is their Senior uh, Victorian Certificate of Education. So these are the courses students take before they uh, enter into a higher, higher education. And um, the, these are uh, potential roads to VCE. For example, if you have a look at the middle uh, VCE subject media, uh, these are, uh, are some potential subjects that students can pick on the road to media. Um, and because we're all about voice and choice, uh, there's no compulsory uh, subjects. Uh, students can basically uh, pick as many of these subjects as they like. Uh, they have a total of about 25 electives across the board. 
Um, and all of our subjects have the same uh, amount of time because our philosophy is that there's no hierarchy of subjects. So mathematics, English, fine art, uh, media and society, whatever you pick, um, are fully um, have the same time as each other, which is brilliant. So for those of you who are, are build timetables, um, I won't bore you too much with this, but we basically have a, a fully vertically uh, blocked uh, timetable, uh, which means that we're, we're basically running uh, seven lines um, across uh, the timetable. Uh, we have six lines uh, of six periods plus a seven line of my being. And it's in our my being uh, space that we do all of our social and emotional learning, all our pathways, discussions, we have some metacognition and uh, getting our learners to understand themselves as uh, empowered uh, young people. Uh, that all happens in that my being space. Um, but uh, everyone else basically does the subjects um, uh, within those uh, blocks, uh, which makes it a really easy uh, uh, to timetable. Um, and we have a 10 day timetable, uh, 70 minute periods. I know it's a lot of color there for you to see. Um, Basically, if you have a look for every period one class, uh, coloured blue here, we've got a period four class. For every period two, we've got a period three. So what we call it, it's a balanced timetable, um, which uh, teachers um, uh, basically like the fact that they can have uh, their classes at different times of the day, but they're always being in the afternoon, always in the morning. Uh, we have no doubles. Um, that is simply uh, our structured timetable. Um, and our part-time teachers can opt in to uh, whatever blocks they want to teach uh, to coordinate childcare and all those other things around our timetable. So that's proved to be pretty popular with our teachers. I mentioned my being. And uh, 2020, uh, my being, uh, uh, sorry, my map started here in Australia. Um, obviously, that's COVID year. Um, I know that um, all of you were disrupted, um, you know, in schools um, throughout that time. Um, here at Assumption, um, we we basically were in a shire or council uh, that's had the most um, in and out of lockdowns in the world. Uh, so we shifted to um, uh, online learning and then back to school 11 times um, across 2020 and 2021. Uh, the Victorian government was quite um, eager to, um, to keep us locked up at times, which was great uh, for keeping us safe. Uh, but having 11 shifts in and out of, um, you know, lockdown at the same time as launching my map was incredibly uh, challenging. Um, and to put it in context, it wasn't probably until 2022 where we had full uninterrupted year um, COVID free. So where we started back in 2016, uh, 2020, uh, we started with 199 different uh, subjects, um, which sounds a lot and it is a lot. Um, but um, it worked in our fully blocked timetable. Um, now we have about 285 subjects which students can select uh, across uh, year seven and 10. And that includes being able to accelerate into what we call vocational education subjects or, or VCE subjects. Um, and this is all in a very, very conservative traditional school. So we're not some boutique unique school um, that's going rogue. Uh, we've been able to do this uh, really innovative stage and age curriculum, you know, in a very conservative traditional uh, model. And as as a result, um, about 89% of our classes are multi-age, uh, which means you walk around the school and 89% uh, of our classes have kids from at least two year levels. Um, and we have a lot of visitors from around the country who can't believe their eyes when they walk in and can't pick out the year eights from the year nines or year tens, uh, but we've got a lot of data to help um, explain what's happened. Um, there were some fears that everyone was going to do PE and no one was going to do any other subjects when we shifted to this model. Um, but this is some data to show that, um, you know, ever since we shifted to a new model, there is a wonderful spread of students across all the learning domains. Probably the only uh, learning domain that's really had a hit in numbers is languages. Um, where we've only got 2% of our students uh, selected to do a language. Um, and what we say is that's okay. It's a student-centered uh, timetable. It's not a timetable for uh, adults. Um, and whatever the students select, uh, we'll put on um, as a school. So one of the wonder wonders of my map um, are the class sizes. Um, I know speaking to Chris, um, you know, and Nick, uh, the class sizes in America um, edge up fairly high. 
Uh, because we use an elective-based model, uh, it's created a timetable where the average class sizes are around 20. Uh, so you imagine being an Australian teacher, being told that um, you're teaching a class of 20, um, you're getting six periods a cycle of, of 70 minutes, um, which means that the, the most you're teaching is five classes based on our um, union agreement. Um, so an average Australian uh, teacher at Assumption uh, would be teaching no more than 100 students at any one time, um, which uh, means a lot more uh, relationships, a lot less assessments, a lot less uh, work, etc. Now, I know this is really hard to see. This is uh, a little tool that we've built um, in our school called MyMapper. Uh, and basically, uh, students can build this uh, themselves. Um, it's a digital uh, tool where uh, the students log on uh, line um, and they basically build a map of their learning experience from year seven to year 12. So you might see over here, we've got year one right through to year you know four on the left-hand side. Um, so if you're sitting with the careers teacher, um, looking at your mind mapper, they can, in one uh, visual, be able to see where students uh, started from, where they are now and where they're heading. Um, and if you pop your pop your, your mouse over the icon, up pops the, uh, the unit outline. So um, any adult or anyone uh, can read uh, exactly what the student's done. So it's a funky little tool uh, that we've done. So finally, I'd just like to show you some data. Um, I mentioned... Uh, that back in 2016, everyone said our students were not uh, engaged or motivated. Um, we said at the time that our best metrics for success were to raise our engagement levels. Um, every year, luckily, we've had some data um, uh, from our surveys. Now, what um, MAX stands for is Melbourne Archdiocese Catholic Schools. So we're one of uh, about 100 different schools across the sector. Um, back in 2019, um, the school engagement data showed that about 33% uh, of Victorian secondary schools uh, were engaged. That's probably in line with your Gallup poll data in America. Um, and we have a similar pattern here in Australia. Um, I think um, you guys call it the school engagement cliff, um, where for every year of schooling, uh, engagement drops. Uh, we have a sim similar phenomenon here in Australia. Um, but what you've seen in Victorian schools since COVID is a significant hit on student engagement. Uh, so as you can see from this um, uh, graph here, um, uh, engagement has dropped from about 33% down to 27% uh, across uh, the state. So again, that has been quite uh, normal. Now, I showed you some data uh, back in 2016. I'd like to let you know that in 2019, Assumptions engagement had increased to 33%. So we're on par with um, other schools around the sector. So this is what's happened um, since um, we've gone to my map. So again, a lot of a lot of data, sea of numbers. But what you see um, on top here are the average uh, uh, engagement data um, uh, across the sector, and what you see down the bottom is Assumption College engagement data. So where it's coloured light green, uh, assumption is 5% higher than the state average. Where it's dark green, um, it's 10% higher than the state average. Um, and this has really excited us here at Assumption. Um, as you can see, um, there is a lot of light green, dark green. Um, and we've basically, since 2016, gone from the bottom 10 percentile right up to probably the top um, school in the state uh, for school in engagement. I'll show you a bit of longitudinal data that is a little bit more helpful. Um, so these are the same cohort uh, across eight, nine, and 10. And what I've done is I've pulled out the engagement data relating to, I suppose, the, the most important um, indicators of um, um, uh, engagement, and that's the uh, effective dimensions. Uh, in other words, the attitude students have uh, regarding their excitement um, and eagerness to learn and interest in their classes. So um, as you can see from the data, the max uh, average for uh, year eight students um, has dropped from 39% down to 30%. Um, ours have gone up from 39 to 49%. So the gap has been 19%. Um, and I don't know what it's like in Australia. We've got... Um, Quite a phenomenon in in, um, in Victorian schools uh, where engagement is the lowest at year nine, eight and nine. 
um, you'd hear an assumption our engagement levels actually uh, increased, which was quite staggering. All right. I think that's about it, folks. So oh, a quick actually, question for you, Vaughn, uh, yes. because people might not have the, the context for it. What are some of like examples of the classes that I believe that you kind of have students sign up for these, and that's how you kind of gauge which classes are actually going to run based off the number of student signups. Like, what are the classes that came out of this MyMap system that didn't exist in the more typical? Yeah, sure. So, in, in in the Victorian curriculum, uh, we have um, eight different learning domains. Um, so they're fairly traditional, everything from humanities, science, English, mathematics, languages, health, PE, um, etc. Um, and we have um, some written standards um, that uh, teachers are expected to um, uh, to teach to. Um, uh, th there is quite um, a lot of content. And what we basically said to the staff members, um, you can uh, design any subject that you'd like to teach, um, as long as it's aligned with the Victorian curriculum. Um, so what teachers basically did within their departments is build uh, subjects mapped to the Victorian right. curriculum, uh, but basically made a deep dive into them. So, um, for example, you might be um, a humanities teacher um, and you've decided to uh, have a deep dive into, um, you know, history. Uh, so there's multiple history uh, courses students can take. And the idea, Chris, if you did want to uh, do history uh, in VCE, you would have had um, opportunities to learn multiple uh, history subjects on your road to, uh, to history. Um, in science, for example, instead of doing a traditional science, um, students can do chemistry, physics, um, you know, STEM, uh, biology, psychology from year seven all the way up. So biology, for example, has marine biology, forensic biology, um, you know, uh, genetics um, as deep dive courses. Um, so instead of having a superficial experience, um, you know, across year seven and 10, they're having those mastery courses. And that's why we've got those, you know, 250, you know, subjects plus. Um, in health and PE, we've got things like lifestyle fitness, ball sports, striking sports, individual sports. Uh, we have high-performance basketball, high-performance uh, soccer. Um, so they're really specialised subjects, uh, you know, mapped to areas of interest, needs and wants of students. Um, and the reason why we can have so many subjects, um, instead of having, you know, 12-year, 8 English classes, you know, you might have, you know, um, you know, four lots of three different types of English and they're all mapped to uh, different genres and interests of, of our young people. You know, I've got subjects like archaeology where a teacher who had an archaeology degree who never dreamed that he would teach archaeology uh, has, has built two courses. Um, they make their treasure in the 3D printer and, uh, and go do some digs in the long jump pit. Um, you know, we run um, a subject called uh, remote pilot's license where kids build and, and, and fly uh, drones. Um, we've got uh, three uh, food kitchens running uh, basically every period across the cycle, uh, having subjects like from paddock to plate. Uh, we've got a working farm where we raise those animals and uh, end up in our restaurant. So um, we're very, very lucky. We've got, you know, we're on 95 acres, uh, so space is no issue. Um, we've been able to um, have low class sizes because about 30% of our classes um, are basically outside. Um, and, you know, uh, the teachers have basically created the subjects for uh, for this to, work, uh, to run. So I know we're, we're close to time and we appreciate you sharing that, Vaughn. Does anyone have, you can probably take like a couple of questions real quick about um, the system that they, they've set up here at Assumption. Barring that, would it be cool, Vaughn, If because I know we linked to the podcast that um, you and Kate did two years ago. Um, yep. Is How else can people maybe get access to uh, Assumptions website or any of the materials or follow up with you. I'm I'm hoping perhaps we can get a copy of that presentation because I think um, I know I will want to go back through and look at the that survey data was really compelling and maybe other folks would as well. 
Um, but yeah, Monique even asked in the chat, how many hours on any given subject do students take a week? Yeah, great question. We have um, four periods a day, 70 minutes um, per class, and you basically do three classes per week. Um, and as I mentioned, we don't have a hierarchy of subjects. So, um, you know, every student has the same amount of time per subject. Um, and that's probably double the amount of time that you get in a traditional school. Um, and again, going back to our theme of mastery, we really want our students to deep dive and, and hence why we give them three 70 minute periods per week. So Nick, I've, I've certainly sent through to Chris uh, the presentation. Um, I would welcome a discussion with any person or school if you'd like to discuss student autonomy or creative ways to manage a timetable. Um, I'm uh, the international um, HRP uh, representative in Australia, and um, we you know, would love uh, to put on uh, you know that badge to to support any schools that uh, would love some help. Um, we're you know a little bit lucky in Victoria. We got some. Um, restrictions on what we have to teach, but we're probably a little bit more liberal than most other states. Um, but I've, we've been very creative. Um, I don't know whether it's rule breaking or just navigating around the rules, uh, but we've managed to do that very well. And, and we welcome opportunities to see, you know, what other schools can do, you know, in your context. That's so awesome. Thank you so much, Vaughn. And um, if people have other questions after you get a well-deserved nap in today, um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could jump on the Discord too, and we can kind of uh, toss these things back and forth as well. So, uh, you can also that's awesome. your email, Vaughn. Again, Vaughn is our connection in H uh, HRP land, Australia. So, if he has his own HRP email, uh, you can reach out to him. I put it there in the chat, just Vaughn at HRP .org. Um And yeah, let's let's go ahead and take our our break, folks. Thanks again, Vaughn. <laughs> Signing off here at five fifteen a.m. Uh, good seeing you, uh, but. Yeah, we'll chat again here, folks, if you want to join us in about 13-ish minutes uh, with the Clark Street Community School uh, doing their school tour. So, yeah, uh, stick around. Uh, I am going to shut down this link, but we'll join right back up here in about a little more 10 minutes. Talk to you soon. Good luck out there. Thanks, everyone.